Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, a macro trend. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Also, check out the sale on the premium list. You can find a link to that in the description below as well to lock in the lower rate. Let's go ahead and jump in. We've spoken about this trend before. It has been quite a while, but I think it's time for an update. Generally, this trend is noticing similarities between moves or disparities between, say, the 100-week SMA and the 200-week SMA. So the 100-week SMA and the 200-week. And we want to note how close they come to each other and then how far apart they go. Okay, and we want to use that information to try to understand where we may be within the market cycle. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to take the division of these two moving averages. So we're gonna take the, the, the 100 week and divide it by the 200 week. When you do that, you get this. Okay, when you do that, you get this. And what you'll notice, what you'll notice is there, there tend to be these areas of, um, there tend to be these peaks and valleys. And we can also note, too, that over the macro scale, it seems like they may be converging. OK, um, you know, if you just if you just look at this for what it is and, and draw these lines sort of connecting, uh, maybe I should make them a different color. So it, it stands out a little bit more. But what you'll notice, what you'll notice is that they seem to be converging, ultimately speaking, over the macro scale. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it means down here, it means down here that they're not getting as close to one another. Okay, you can see here and then here. They didn't get as close to each other here as they did over here. But also, if you look at the top, they don't get as far apart from each other each, each time, okay, which occurs occurs right over here. You can see that. This one and this one. And you might say, well, could we use this? Could we use this to predict the market cycle peak? Well, you can't use this one because this, you know, the, the, the moving averages are a lagging indicator. Remember, moving averages are a lagging indicator. And so the, the, the peak separation between these two tends to occur near the end of the bear market, okay? So if you look at this one, this occurred near the end of the bear market and the peak more or less corresponded to right before the final crash, okay? Right before the final crash. And then if you come over here and you look to see where this peak was, where do you, what do you notice? You also notice that it occurred at the, near the end of the bear market, but right before the final crash, before we really started to gear up and get moving for the market cycle if you measure it from say just the market cycle bottom okay so you have peaks and you have valleys what do you notice about the valleys though well the valleys tend to occur near the beginning of of you know a, a long a very long bull market um, this one occurred back in september of 2016 or october of 2016 you can see that occurred right here okay which wasn't very long after the bull market really got kicked off. And then this one, this one started in September of 2020, which was right before this crazy move. So what you notice is over the macro scale, the, the, the distance between the 100 week SMA and the 200 week SMA, they're not getting as far apart at the top or when they're, when they're getting far extended from each other, they're not as extended as they have been in the past. But then when you get down to the bottom, they're not getting as close to each other as they were in the past. So maybe what this means is that people are becoming more aware of the bottoms and sort of this macro trend, but also becoming more aware of the tops as well. Now, another interesting thing to look at might be the change in concavity. So if you think back to back to math class, you'll have these concave up patterns and concave down patterns. But at some point, there's an inflection point when it goes from concave up to concave down. OK, and, and these these are, are at least worth discussing um, because because of what what it could mean, what, what, what that change in concavity could mean. 
So in this case, the change in concavity was basically the start of the bull market. I mean, it was basically the start of the bull market. And in this case, the change in concavity, which you just take the time, you just take the derivative of it. Um, I'm just sort of estimating it here. I, I could I could take the derivative of it, but it's somewhere in this ballpark, right? It's somewhere in this ballpark, and you can see that it's getting pretty close to the peak where 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 it changes concavity. Okay. Um, and then when you're coming down, when you're coming down, this is pretty close to the actual start of the bull market, if you wanted to measure it as from the March dip, okay? Pretty close within a few months, within a few months, maybe about three months or so, you could say it, it got within to the, the peak of the, of the bull market. But right now, it's interesting because we've had so much interest cycle volatility similar to 2013. Okay, so 2013, we know, we know we had a lot of interest cycle volatility. Therefore, it's sort of throwing this thing out of whack a little. It's not just making this long methodical move up and then slowly turning over. Instead, you can see it's already turning over a little bit. Well, why is that? Well, one thing you have to consider is that the 200 week moving average takes into account a lot of data. Okay, so if we were to go out 200 weeks, it works, we're actually still taking data into account from July of 2017, July of 2017. If we were to take the, from the data from the 100 week moving average, we're taking into account data from June of 2019. And so we're, we're taking the averages of these, of these different sort of mini moves because you can see the reason why, why it's starting to turn Look at this. We're, we're about the 100 week SMA is about to start. Um, it's going to have a hard time continuing this this move up as quickly as it was because it's about to start replacing some of these values with with um, uh, lower values rather than what we were we were moving up with. Right. So we was moving up. So we were replacing, you know, replacing them with, like, say, 14,000, 13,000. But over the next few months, we're going to be starting to to get rid of some of these other ones where it's starting to move down, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So basically, let me explain it again. So instead of, instead of when we look at the 100 week SMA, maybe if I, if I delete this one, it'll be a little bit more apparent. So if we look at the 100 week SMA, right now, we're, we're basically every week, we're replacing what, something over here with something over here, okay? And now, as we continue to move on for the next several months, we're going to, instead of replacing some of these higher values, we're going to be replacing really small values, even as low as five or six thousand dollars with some of these up here. So that is probably going to make this change a little. It's going to it's probably going to make this not look so nice is what I'm saying. So instead of instead of maybe just having because we're also dealing with the fact that the 200 week goes back to this bull market. OK, so instead of just having like this nice move up back to the top, which is what we've gotten in the past, it seems like there could be a little bit more volatility of this of this metric where maybe it turns over a little bit and then goes back up or something. OK, that's obviously one one potentiality uh, that we could that we could draw out of this because of how much volatility there has been in this bull market. The last bull market was more or less straight up. It was more or less straight up. And we don't really capture all the stuff that happened over here and all this crazy volatility because it's the 100 week SMA and the 200 week SMA. And we simply did not have 200 weeks of data until until May of 2014. So my guess is, you know, if we if we did have data going back further, which we could, we could sort of speculate what that might look like. It might not look as clean as some of these do. It might not look quite as clean. So you can see this one is starting to turn over a little. And the reason it's starting to turn over is because again, again, the 200 week, the 200 week is moving up relatively quickly. Um, but the 100 week, it's, it's sort of, it's sort of not, it's, it's not keeping pace with, with maintaining that distance. Okay. And that's why it's starting to turn over. And if the price comes down, so if the price comes down or if it just spends some time in this area, you might get, you might see this start to level off here at sort of maybe like the halfway point rather than, rather than going all the way back up to the top immediately. Okay. So 
doesn't mean we can't continue on and then we'll sort of get like a, a different shape and we can maybe still use this up here to help time to help time a future you know a future change in market conditions but so far so far it seems like it is slightly turning over you can see it is slightly turning over which which means that we might not go immediately up like like um uh, like some people might think like we might not go immediately up because in order for us to to go immediately up the, the price of Bitcoin needs to start moving relatively quickly so that the 100 week moving average, you know, continues to move up relatively quickly. And from that point, from that point, maybe that change in concavity would help would help predict the, the change in momentum, the change in momentum. But so far, the change in concavity is coming down here. And I think it's I think it's an artifact of a lot of interest cycle volatility that we've had this market cycle. Um, it hasn't been smooth to say the least. We had this crazy run here and now we're having this crazy run here and it's it's sort of throwing a wrench into our concave up, concave down pattern of the 100 week divided by the 200 week moving average. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it. Uh, maybe maybe you'll see these sort of do something like this and then and then separate again as as Bitcoin you know recovers and continues on higher. But anyways, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. And remember to check out the premium list if you want access to the premium content. We have a sale going on. You can lock in the lower rate by checking out the description below. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.